Jesus name I like to read this whole chapter here uh, verse 10 is where the scripture I should be anointed but it's Psalm 92 it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and sing praise to your name O most high to show forth your love kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night most people wake up mad you know Matt Dillon I heard him tell that lady that uh, that's on the show with him Kitty said Kitty I went to bed last night feeling mean and woke up meaner <laughs> I mean no that about it, ain't it I thought that was something you know? I went to bed feeling mean and woke up meaner how many has ever went to bed feeling not good and woke up feeling worse but God is our Lord of healing in the morning and in night upon instruments of ten strings and I can't pronounce some of these you know David made praise to the Lord for you Lord have made me glad through your work I will triumph in the works of your end and I have I rejoiced many times looking back uh, at some beyond man miracles three times in my life people had amputated legs God created legs I remember that's what broke out the revivals in Nigeria they brought a little girl up 14 years old didn't have a right leg and I prayed for her and that leg jumped out before about 50,000 people and revival broke out it was it was unbelievable time I laid my hands on her that leg but she born without that right leg and it jumped out and it shook all Benin City and all across that part of uh, Nigeria it shook that it made this gospel come alive in that part of the world how I many know oh God's a good God you know and God recreated my leg and so I know he is a creator so you, you, you got to praise him for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will rejoice in the works of your hand. You know, we're supposed to praise God for the good things. You know, a lot of people blame God for the bad things. The Bible said Jesus went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. So if there's a sickness involved or there's a... a, a, a evil spirit troubling you or your trouble in your nerves or trouble in your mind it's the devil oppressed all of these things is oppression Peter said how God anointed preaching in Acts Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost of power who went about doing good healing all oppressed of the devil God wants to give you that anointing. You know, back when I got saved and came into holiness, the average Christian that had the Holy Ghost was doing more miracles and healings in those days than they're supposed to be the pastors and the preachers today. Man, Holiness wasn't like it is now. I said, hold it. You know, the Lord appeared to me a little over 40 years ago in 67 with this Jesus message. You know, time's going by. Some of y'all remember when I came out with this Lamb of God cry. And God has kept that anointing of the testimony of Jesus in me. He anointed me to preach Jesus. All these other things is good, but right now we need Jesus. We are the testimony of Jesus. Oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man knows not, neither does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass when all the works of iniquity do flourish 
It is that they shall be destroyed forever. Right now, we're moving into a time that God said He's going to destroy what's happening in America. You can believe it or not, America's going to go through some tribulations. You say, how do you know? God said all nations, and America's been the number one Christian country on the face of the earth. And right now, Christianity, since this man's been in office four years, heard O'Reilly say this himself, Christianity has fell from 92% people believing in God. This was six months ago in July when O'Reilly said this, and it's gotten worse because if it hadn't been, we wouldn't have reelected him. Ain't that right? Even though it was by uh, crooks, you know, they, uh, his people voted 10 times each, many of them. That's the reason he got it. He passed a law himself that you didn't have to have no ID to vote. And that's the reason he knew that that was the only way he could win. But I'm going to tell you something. God is still God of Obama. And Obama's not running this earth. God is. Obama's not running America. God is. You're going to see that before this four years is up. When, you, when these tornadoes hits, when these cyclone hits, when these tidal waves hits, when God starts hitting this country with earthquakes, you're going to know that God is not taking a hickory. He's going to take a stick. This is a good... Anybody want to throw a ball at me? That's what that's for right there. That's a head knocker. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. A while back, I run on some bad people, you know, and I had that thing. And I said, y'all want to somebody come against me? Come on up here. I'll fight you. <laughs> and I picked up that staff. Nobody moved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. But this is a day that God's fixing to move. Amen. We are exactly like the Scripture said. The earth was filled with violence. Every time God has moved, we've gotten like this. When the wicked spring as the grass, all the works of iniquity do flourish. It is that they should be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, are most high forevermore, forever and ever. Otherwise, for lo, your enemies, O Lord, for lo, your enemies shall perish and all the work of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn, my strength, or my life, I sh shall you exalt like the horn or strength of an end corn, a wild ox. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. You know why I keep going? I keep a fresh anointing. I've never let this word that's in me and this revival and this message of Jesus grow cold. I keep the, the revelation of Christ in my heart. I said, I keep the revelation of Christ in my heart. You know, Jesus, the Bible said here in 4, Luke, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being 40 days tempted of the devil. In those days he did, in those days did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he was afterwards hungry. He had to go through a series of temptations of the devil. The Bible said he was tempted in all points as we are, but yet without sin. And verse 16, he came to Nathus, where he had been brought up, as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, stood up to read. He was a good reader from a kid. There was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he opened, 
the book, he found the place is written, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Sent me, anointed to, to heal the broken hearts, to preach deliverance to the captive. That's people that's bound with sicknesses and spirits. Recovers of sights to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Closed the book, gave it again to the minister, sat down in the eyes of all them that were, that were in the synagogues were fast on him. He said, he began to say to them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. They got upset about it. But I believe we're moving into that day again. We've got to have another revival. And I know that's why God keeps me uh, going to these different places. They may not ever, but God told me the other day. Now you can believe this or not, I was praying. I was, I'm very concerned about America. Because this country sent me to over 200 countries. And if it goes down... I know God will make a way, maybe some other way, but I enjoy living in this country. Well, you do or not. God, I've been in over 200 countries of the world. I only like 37 countries reaching every country on the face of the earth. And I want to reach them. And America has sent me. And right now there's people working on uh, uh, these doors of these 37 countries. It's been unpreached. There's right now ministers in these countries are getting their doors ready for us to hit these countries. Thank God. You may not believe that, but the preachers all over the world is prepared for us to come because I'm not just a Benny Hinn. I'm not uh, just one of these TV preachers going around just, just talking about money all the time. I'm talking about a man that walked this earth 2,000 years ago that was anointed with the Holy Ghost, anointed with power and the works that I do. You can do them. I can do them. If you will get down to business with God, if you let God anoint you, God God told me many years ago when, when Jesus comes, this last day revival, that the common believer is going to be doing more miracles than Oral Roberts, me, and Shambach, and these great men that was in the 50s and them in the 40s. He said they're going to be doing more miracles. Just a believer in God, just a Holy Ghost filled believer is going to be doing more miracles and more healing than those healing evangelists that was that I come up under uh, 50 years ago, 52 years ago, even though I'm just 39 years old, hanging on, praise God with that 39, ain't going to get no older, praise God, because this gospel of power is coming in like a rushing mighty wind again. It's coming in that the handmaids is going to go. The sons is going to go. The daughters is going to go. It's going to take an army to reach this world. Why would you think that Joel would prophesy and Jesus back it up in the gospel. The Lord will sound a trump before his army. The trump of God is fixing to be saying, you know, uh, in the uh, old days, they'd sound that trump when men go to battle. When they heard that uncertain sound, they didn't go. That's what we're hearing today in these poor pits all over this country, uncertain sound. But we fixing to get that sound of revival. We fixing to get that trump. It ain't going to be an uncertain sound. It's going to be a trump of God shall sound. And when this trump of God is sound, preachers is going to come alive real handmaids is going to the spirit's going to fall on them sons the spirit's going to fall on them handmaids young men old men is going to get rejuvenated thank God and the power of God you're going to find one day you're going to be a temple of the fluid like a river coming out of your belly like rivers of living waters to flow not to build your name but to pour out life to the neighbors to prepare your community when you walk the street I saw a time that God's people was going to be so full of the Holy Ghost people going to walk on the other side of the street not because they think they're trash but because the power of God is so strong people are going to be afraid to walk on the street with this army of God it's going to sound like a rushing light wind again 
And Jesus said, the works that I do, they're going to be doing. He told me the coming believers. Stir yourself up. God and put you on the sideline. You're a temple of God. God said, in my people, what you call by my name. Preach deliverance to the captive. Deliverance recovers the sights to the blind. Look at the people today, the mess and abuse, and the, those that are bruised. To heal. We're in an upset world. And God, if you can't do nothing but pray, if you can't do nothing but fast, you can do that. Peter said how God anointed, this is Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good, healing all that was oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things. Peter was telling, we are. We are witnesses. Did you know when you get the Holy Ghost, the Bible said the Holy Ghost in you is the testimony of Christ? I said, the Holy Ghost is the testimony of Christ. I, I don't understand how that, that all of this church world can get out here and all these TV preachers can get out here and, and be so empty of Christ. God is raising up a brand new army. The church world is dying, and you know it. You know that big charismatic Benny Hinn and all that other group? They were who they was. You know that bunch that started all that mess, Trinity, to broadcast Jan and Paul? You know where they are now? Down yonder in Florida, right out of Tampa, doing shows. Got a, they call it a Israel land down there and people going there playing Christ, birthing Jesus and got little Mary in there and people going down there seeing all that crap. Let me tell you something, they ain't getting nothing done. It's over for them. Yeah. You don't hear nothing about old rooster, no, I mean old hen no more. It's over for them. This is our day. They had their day for about 20 years or 15 and it didn't work and now God is raising up you He's raising up people across this country that ain't going to be a, a movie star preachers, but it's going to be a rugged men with dying faith. You've heard me for years in these last days. God's going to raise up rugged men, handmaids that are stand up. Well, already you women are wearing the pants anyhow, so God just well pour the Holy Ghost up on you <laughs> and make a man out of you. God's going to thank you a man anyhow, so he's going to pour the Holy Ghost out upon you, and you're going to get out here, get them pants on, get your dress on, and praise God, hallelujah, and because God had poured the Holy Ghost out upon you, and with fire, God said the handmaids, the dishwasher, how many remember years ago I told you that I saw a vision that the dishwashers, the ditch diggers, the coming labor was going to lay their hammers down, take their, 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 their apron off, and they do their carpenter work. I saw people on side of houses painting it, got off of the rack, got off the scaffold, and ran preaching the gospel. I saw people hitting the highways and hedges, and God said, I'm going to do a quick work. I'm going to cut it short in righteousness, and God wants you to pray and get yourself ready. Thank God. God's got a word for you. God didn't put you on a sideline. The other day I was traveling over under Brother Summerlin. That old train comes by there. 
Boy, that old locomotive, man, it was really getting and had two engines in front and two behind pushing it. I looked around and I thought, God, that's that's me. That's the church. Praise God, God will have to put two locomotives in ahead of you, put two behind you. Praise God. You ain't gonna be able to back up because they're gonna be two pushing you and two pulling you. You're gonna be like a locomotive heading down that highway, heading down that railroad track, and ain't nothing. If a car gets in, it's gonna knock you out of the way. If a cow gets on the, on the railroad track going to get knocked off. Praise God that locomotive of the Holy Ghost is on its way. I said the locomotive is coming like a train. This train is a Holy Ghost train. This train. This train is a Jesus train. This train. This train is coming. I said the train of the Lord is coming like a locomotive. And the devil can't stop it. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God anointed you. If you believe today, you can give your body to the Lord. You say, yeah, but I'm useless. That's the kind of people God needs. God don't need people that's just out here halfway. He needs some folks to, to get a vision. The Bible said we're, he ain't talking about a dream. He's talking about a spiritual vision. I've got a vision for Mexico. I've got a vision for Africa. I've got a vision for America. He said, what you see last night? It ain't what I see in a dream or in a trance. It's what I see in the Holy Ghost. I see a move of God coming that ain't nothing. Obamas and all these infidels and all these atheists and all these Muslims and, and everything else that, uh, you know, Christianity fell from 92% to 42% in the last four years. Well, it's just getting ripe for revivals. When nations forget God, God does something. I said when nations forget God, God turns uh, uh, some of them into hell and the rest of them wakes up. Thank God he said all nations forget God to be turned into hell. But but those that are righteous is going to put on their armor. Those that are going to put on their helmet. Those are going to be shot with the preparation of the gospel of the Holy Ghost. That's what God going to do to you today. He going to shoe you. He going to put the shoes of the gospel on you. Hallelujah! I said, Hallelujah! Glory! Hallelujah! I feel the whole Ohio catch up on Italia. Hallelujah! God wants you. Jesus needs you. I said, Jesus needs you. You see, but I'm old and feeble. Well, I ain't. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. God working on folks. God working on folks. It's your day. Modern day religions going out. This has been a history of peace itself. You know, the law lost its power. And Jesus come on the scene. For a hundred years after Christ to somewhere in the second, early part of the second century, revival died out. Stayed dead for 1,400 years. Here come John Huss preaching again throughout Europe. Well, it went back into darkness again. A great revival. 14, 1500. Then here it come again in the 18th century. The Wesleys. Wesley said, I spoke in a language I didn't know what it was. He went by horse. His horse was lame. He got off and prayed for his lame horse. Those days they'd shoot him or, or kill him. God healed his lame horse. 
John Wesley started preaching, if God can heal a lame horse, he can heal a lame man. John Wesley, the history said he began to have miracles. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a God hadn't turned us over to the devil. He hadn't turned us over to the destruction of the flesh. He's, he's got a church out here somewhere. He's got a people born of the water and of the spirit. He's got a people that had become a new creature. The old man had been crucified with him and the new man, Jesus, he had been awakened. The great giant that I saw years ago froze. How many remember the vision? More than 40 years ago, the great giant was froze. And he looked like he was as long, along in this building, laying there froze. And all of a sudden, I seen like fire melt in the snow, melt in the ice. After a while, I saw he moved his leg up. Then he moved his leg up. Then he moved his arm. Then he moved his other arm, moved his head. Then he sat up. Then he rose. And he stood up into the heavens, high up. And he began to walk. And when he did, the earth began to shake. And a voice spoke, and I've seen every kind of miracle. And God said, this is my church. This is over for us. The church is going to go into a deep sleep. Throne. God said many are called, few are chosen. The church is cold. The church has been froze. The church has died. The church is asleep. But I saw God woke it up. And I saw this giant. And God said this is the revival. And it went from one end of the United States and went to all over the world. This great giant reached out and the mighty power of God and it turned into a body of people. And I saw this body of people, handmaids and servants, children, old men, young men, and everywhere they went Fuels was interrupted. Graveyards, people's coming out of the graves. Thank God, fuels were being erupted. Blind eyes were seeing. Legs was being created. Eyeballs were being created. Mighty God, what a revival fire! <laughs> hallelujah! I said, Hallelujah! Revival fire! going to anoint you. You said, I can't pray. Well, you can get anointed to pray. You said, I can't pray. God can anoint you to pray. You said, I can't read the Bible no more. It just don't make sense. God going to anoint you to read the Bible. Yeah. All he wants is your body. Offer your body to him. You know, my mind's running a year ago this next month. I was over yonder in Nigeria, one of them countries. I'm not sure it was Nigeria. But nevertheless, it was an African country. A little... Uh, it was Kenya. Northern Kenya. A little girl was born without eyeballs. 17 years old. We was up there, she was a my side. They believe the cow is God. They suck blood out of, they take blood from their veins and from the cow's veins and shoot it in their veins to make them saved. Brother Dave went down in him the, through the Maasai Reservation, Nelson. The revival's coming. It was 18, 17 miles. That's as the closest they let us. We was the fact, but we the only preacher that's ever reached the Maasai people. Nobody on the face of the earth, they've never listened to preaching, uh, preachers. This little girl heard the announcement about the blind seeing. Now it's in her language. She walked 17 miles of the blind stick. First night I was there. 
over 50,000 people opening the service. First one up, Brother Taylor was, was with us on that trip. You talked to him about it. She was the first one. He tried to get off the platform, but she got right back on it. He'd take her and set her off. He said, he's not calling for you. She said, huh? And she was, he couldn't understand, but she fought her way to be first one in the line. Not an eyeball in her head. Opened her eyes and it right deep, looked like a little bitty button. Was you there? Brother Tyrone was there with me. Like a little bitty button, but her eyes had never been opened because she didn't have no eyeball. We laid our hands over that little woman's eyes, that little girl's eyes, and God put eyeballs in her head. I stepped back. Glory. And I held one of these hatches back. I had to have two interpreters. One that I had to have two interpreters because I had to translate in one language and then somebody else translated a second interpreter, preaching through two interpreters. And I stepped back and I began to wave this anxious. That little girl, 17 years old, never seen. I said, what do you see? And of course, one of the interpreters to the other and said, she said, I see something white in her language, waving. When that happened, there was three others behind, didn't have no eyes either, and they were healed. Before I could turn around the first service, I asked for 10, but Brother Taylor said there's 14 blind people. One behind the other was healed. Now revival had broke out among the Masai. A tribe that's never heard the gospel. Oh, hallelujah. Brother Dave is up there now. Reorganizing revivals for us to go to Kenya in February. The Lord willing. Thank you, Jesus. He said, where do you want to go? I said, I want to go up there where them when folks never heard the gospel. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is getting the gospel to the poor. God, it needs you. It's not what you're going to get out of it. It's what you're going to put in it. He needs your life. He needs your sons. He needs your daughters. How old are you? Huh? 17. I was 18. When the Lord commissioned me to carry this healing message. I was about your size. Because I weighed, when I was uh, 11 years old, I weighed 32 pounds when I was healed. But God's power being a hopeless cripple. Thank you, Jesus. Without an education, God, He's got an education. I didn't have an education, but it ain't education God needs. He needs your heart. He needs your mind. He got everything else you need. Hallelujah. I said he got everything else you need. The Bible is the only thing that I ever learned to read. And I'm glad because I don't know nothing else. But Jesus needs you. But you the one is going to have to say, as Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. Who will go for us? God said. Who will go for us? That shows you Jesus has a father, don't it? Us ain't one. Us is at least two or three. Who will go for us? Boy, that shakes you up, don't it? You people don't want to believe that. Who you think you're talking to? Who will go for us? Thank you, Jesus. God always had somebody said, Here am I. That's all he wants. You can be here, am I? Send me. Send me. Lord, I need a fresh anointing. How God. Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. God wants you today. He needs you. He don't need all your material goods. He needs you. 
your body is a temple. I want you to line up over here. Maybe we should come around this way. This way. Line up. Father, I thank you. I ask you to bless this service this evening at five. But God, today, if you've ever put more than oil in this horn, I pray, God, that you put more than oil in this horn. Mighty God. Mighty God. Lord, anoint us with the Holy Ghost. That's what we need, Lord, today. Is the Holy Ghost. Anoint us with the Holy Ghost and with power. God, give us a fresh anointing today. Oh, Lord. God, anoint us with a fresh anointing. Anoint us today. Oh, Jesus, use me. Oh, Lord, don't refuse. Surely there's a word that I can do.
church Jesus use me no God refuse me surely there's a word I can do lift your hands church let's stay in this spirit let's just keep our minds upon the Lord keep your eyes